Welcome back to another Create Mod tutorial. You can see behind me the old iron farm, a video that I posted probably six months ago. This thing produces about 360 iron per hour. And here is the topic of today's video, an updated iron farm that produces four times as much, 1300 iron ingots per hour. And as you can see is one block taller, but quite a few blocks shorter. And the real main change is this faster cobblestone generator here that works in the newest create mod version, version 0.5.1.f. This one is a little bit more complex, requiring three rotation speed controllers instead of just two. You can remove this rotation speed controller, but it'll cost 5,000 more stress units. So I decided that this was going to be better. And if you are low on crushing wheels and the ability to create them for the moment, you can always not include some of these crushing wheels and still get half of the output here at around 650 iron ingots per hour, which is still double this original smaller one. To talk about briefly how the farm works, it runs mostly off of this cobblestone generator. If we connect this to power, I can show you in slow motion what is happening here. So these two fluid tanks have lava in them. The lava is being pumped through these mechanical pumps down to these blocks here. At the same time, water is flowing downward and that lava and water combination is turning into cobblestone. This gantry shaft is going back and forth moving these trapdoors and andesite funnels. And during the time that it's moving, the cobblestone can actually generate because these moving things aren't considered actual blocks. And then once they become full blocks again, like they get to here, the cobblestone breaks and the cycle continues. These andesite funnels pick up the items and place them on the belts below. As you can see, the belts are dropping them off this way, but obviously in our main farm, they are going into the crushing wheels. Once the cobblestone is in the crushing wheels, they obviously get crushed into gravel. And then an encased fan with water in front of it blows onto the gravel, turning it into iron nuggets and flint. The flint is immediately destroyed while the iron nuggets are placed into this basin that gets crushed by this mechanical press and put into this output barrel here. We have an on and off switch with a smart off switch so that if these hoppers fill up, it automatically turns itself off. And that is honestly the entire farm. It is simpler than it looks as there's only really three components with one of them being crushing iron nuggets into iron ingots. I already talked briefly about the rates, but this farm is six blocks tall, nine blocks long and five blocks wide and produces about 1300 iron per hour. And if we turn this thing on, we can see how many stress units it produces. It is just over 11,000. As always, the schematic will be in the description, but if you want to follow along with this tutorial, the items that you need to build this thing are going to be in the description, and I'll have chapters in the video description telling you where to go if you need a specific component, and I'm going to walk through how to build it so that you can follow along at home. To start, you're going to need a five by nine square here that has six blocks vertically worth of space. And we are gonna start out with the front part of the build here. So we're gonna grab an item vault and place it on the front left corner. Gonna make it a three by three item vault and place a barrel beside it with behind the barrel, a kind of like L shape here for the on and off switch. We can put that in now. We're just gonna place it on this far right corner and then directly behind it, we're gonna place a block. On this block here, we're gonna place a redstone dust with a redstone torch directly below it. And then we're gonna place two redstone dust here, a clutch next to this first redstone dust with one redstone dust above it. Going into the clutch on this like outer right hand side, we're gonna place a rotation speed controller and a large cogwheel right above it. We are gonna set this rotation speed controller to 256 RPM clockwise. And at the end of the build, if the encased fan is heading in the opposite direction, so it's pulling instead of pushing, you're just gonna to have to switch this from clockwise to counterclockwise. After we set that up, we're gonna get our hoppers and place them facing into the barrel here, two going into each other into the barrel like that. And on this second one, we're going to place a redstone comparator going out of it so that it goes into this redstone wire and up into this system. Directly next to this hopper, we're going to place a brass funnel going into the item vault and grab our list filter and put iron nuggets and flint inside of it. Keep all the other options here the same. It should be accept and ignore data. Once you've done that, place that into the filter part of the brass funnel. Directly above it, we're going to place a basin and set the filter on the basin to iron ingots. This will make sure that only iron ingots can be made from this and not anything else that we don't want. 
We're then going to place a, another brass funnel coming out of the basin to drop into the hopper. We're going to set this filter to iron ingots as well. On top of the basin connecting to the item vault, we're going to place a third brass funnel coming out with a filter of iron nuggets. And then directly next to that filter, we're going to place another one with a cauldron below it. You're going to set this filter to flint and fill the cauldron with lava. We're then going to come back over here to the clutch and place a normal gearbox going into it like this, a block of leaves right next to it, an encased fan pointing into the block of leaves, and we're going to waterlog these leaves. Behind this encased fan, we're just going to place down a gearbox with a shaft, another gearbox, this one vertical, a gearbox on top of that, again vertical, but facing the opposite direction as this one here. And then we're going to place a gearbox here on the back left hand corner with a one black gap here. Leaving that for now, we can now get in our main power source. I would recommend not put, connecting this up just yet, but this shaft is going to be what you power it to. As you can see, I just have a creative motor there, but you can power this in really any way that you'd like, as long as it covers the maximum 11,008 stress units. You can even bring it in from down below if you so desire, but I am just gonna bring it out to the back here and then eventually place down a creative motor to get this thing powered up. We're gonna come back to the front here and place in our crushing wheels. We're gonna need four for this farm to run at full speed. If you really cannot afford four crushing wheels at the moment, you can remove the front two. This is not recommended. If you can afford four, I would recommend doing that because if you don't, it will overflow. But if you can't afford all four right at this moment, then you can just do two. After that, we're going to place in two smart shoots with an item vault directly on top of it, and this should be connected. Next to this item vault, we just need to place a mechanical press. Make sure the shaft of the mechanical press is facing horizontally like this and not vertically this way. We're then going to come over to the left hand side here and we're gonna start setting up the belt collection system for all the cobblestone that is being generated. First, we're gonna place an andesite filter onto this item vault. It doesn't matter which direction it's going because once we set up the belt, it won't actually matter. We're then gonna place it in two shafts, one directly next to the smart chute and then one directly above this encased fan. Connect them both with a belt. And as you can see, the direction here doesn't matter and it just changes to a funnel that goes straight into that vault. On this other side here, we're gonna place a shaft that is not connected to this one, another one here right next to this rotation speed controller system, and we're going to connect those with a belt as well. Then we're going to connect this belt to this set of crushing wheels just with a shaft like this, and then we're going to grab a gearbox and place it right next to the this end of the belt with the rotation speed controller there, and then we're going to build two shafts like this, and then go to the end where this gearbox is and place two more, so you should have two shafts, a gap of blocks, two more shafts here, and we're going to connect these with a belt and these with a belt. This will make it so that all the cobblestone goes dropped onto these belts, moved over onto this belt, moved over and into the item vault. We can then place in some more andesite funnels. You're going to shift click them both onto this belt so that they're facing towards it. And then we're going to get in the system that connects this set of crushing wheels to this gearbox here. You're going to build shafts all the way along until you get one block away where we're then gonna place a vertical gearbox that connects this shaft to the crushing wheels and also obviously upward vertical gearbox and all that. We're then gonna place another vertical gearbox, this time facing a different horizontal direction so that it goes into this shaft and this belt, which would curve it upwards to go into this vault. After this gearbox, we're gonna place a shaft, a, another vertical gearbox here that connects to a rotation speed controller, a large cogwheel on top, and we're gonna set this to eight RPM this one, it doesn't matter the direction, clockwise or counterclockwise will work, as this only powers these mechanical pumps in here. We're then going to connect this directly next to another rotation speed controller. This one's set at 170 RPM. Again, clockwise or cl counterclockwise, it doesn't matter. This just moves these spruce trap doors and andesite funnels back and forth. Coming out of the rotation speed controller, we're going to place a shaft, vertical gearbox, and another vertical gearbox to connect up this mechanical press with the 256 RPM shaft here. And now we can move on to the cobblestone generation. This part is a little bit finicky, so make sure you follow along correctly. We're gonna place in 10 andesite funnels going along these belts here. So to start, we're just gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we're gonna place two extra ones on top of this shaft and this redstone wire, all facing downward. So I was shifting while I was placing all of those. 
so that they're all facing downward. Now it's probably a good idea to get this shifting back and forth mechanism set up. We're gonna start with two linear chassis with a one block gap in between them, and then we're gonna need to remove this andesite funnel, place a temporary block, so this brass funnel can come out of it, and then we can remove that and replace in that andesite funnel. This will make it so that while this is moving back and forth, this brass funnel will drop the items onto these two andesite funnels and get placed on the belts here. Then we're gonna need the gantry shaft, so come over to this rotation speed controller here, place a shaft coming out of the bottom part of it with a gantry shaft, another one connected to it like this, and then you're gonna need to shift and place a third gantry shaft so that they are not connected and then place a fourth one so that these are connected. So you should have two gantry shafts connected, a disconnection in the middle, and then two more gantry shafts that are connected. Right above this linear chassis, we're gonna place a gantry carriage and the same thing on this other one here. And then we're gonna place a barrel in the center. Now is a good time to get the glue and glue everything together. So on these sides of the linear chassis, we're gonna glue the front parts here so that they're connected to the andesite funnels. And then we're going to grab a gantry carriage and glue it to this bottom right linear chassis so that these are all connected. If you click the front of this, it will glue the front and not actually glue the whole thing together. So make sure you click on the side. Then we're going to grab a wrench and look at the linear chassis. You should see the number eight on them. If you hold and right click with the wrench, lower this down to one. If you don't do this, it will stick to stuff. If there are other blocks this way, it'll accidentally stick to them and probably break this thing. You're gonna do that to both linear chassis here. So just set that to one. And now if you hold your wrench on this linear chassis, you should just see that this first andesite funnel is being glued. The same thing on this one. Now we're gonna grab some trap doors. It doesn't have to be spruce trap doors. It can be any flavor of trap doors that you would like. And we're gonna place them on the top half of the gantry carriage and barrel block so that it feels like there's a, quite a bit of a gap but there actually isn't any space to place any blocks and we're going to place this all the way along here directly on top of these andesite funnels you can then grab the glue and glue these andesite funnels and the spruce trap doors together so it makes a big old box next we're going to come over to the front part of the farm and place in a vertical gearbox connecting to this large cogwheel and rotation speed controller combo with a small or normal cogwheel right below it. This is gonna power all of our mechanical pumps that we can put in now. We're gonna place them facing downwards into these spruce trapdoor blocks. If you shift and are above them, it will just go straight down, which is what we want. And we're gonna do this for eight blocks total, leaving these last two blank. Now, all the way along these mechanical pumps, we're gonna place in blocks or trapdoors. It doesn't really matter. We just have to prevent water from flowing outward. These gantry shafts will block the water flow along with this shaft, and so will this cogwheel. Next, we can set up the water sources. So if you right click a mechanical pump with a water bucket, it will waterlog it. We need to do that four times in total. If you do them diagonally, it will make it so that the next two become sources and so on so that all of these are waterlogged. I'm now gonna flip up these spruce trap doors because I just think it looks a little better when the water's all hidden. And then we can place in fluid tanks directly above these mechanical pumps. You should see that they are not connected to one another, but have a little two by two square here and a separate one here. Now we need to get lava into these two fluid tanks and that's a little bit difficult to do, but I'm gonna walk you through how to do it really quick. We only need one bucket of lava in each fluid container. So what we're gonna do is grab a pipe, bring it down to just the ground works, and I'm gonna place a basin on the ground with a mechanical pump, if I can do it. Mechanical pump going up, going upwards into one of these fluid tanks here. We're obviously gonna need to power this somehow, so I'm just gonna use a cogwheel and a creative motor, but you can do anything that you'd like. And now, if we get our lava bucket and right click it into the basin, you can see that the basin is filled with lava and lava is traveling upward into this fluid tank. Once this reaches one bucket or a thousand millibuckets, this should be empty and that tank should be good. Then we're gonna do the same thing over on this second tank with just one bucket of lava in the basin. It will travel upward and fill into this fluid tank. Once that's done, you can remove all of these temporary blocks here. And now this cobblestone generator system is good to go. And as that's good to go, I think everything else is as well. 
So I'm going to connect up power to this thing and come back over to the front to turn it on. So when we turn this on, this cobblestone generator should work, start breaking cobblestone back and forth and placing it on these belts. These belts should all be spinning in the direction that makes sense. So they should be going to the left, forward and up into this item vault. If that's not the case, you just have to switch this to counterclockwise. If for some reason it isn't moving after you flick the lever, make sure that you have the redstone torch here and it is being depowered. Once the cobblestone is being generated, we're going to come over to here where these crushing wheels are, and these should also be spinning in the correct direction in line with those belts and also this encased fan. If you hover over the item vault, and you're using the Jade mod, which it doesn't always happen, but you should be able to see up at the top there that there is cobblestone going into the item vault and traveling through these chutes into the crushing wheels. The chutes do say how much cobblestone and what information is in them. So if you hover over these with your engineering goggles, you should see the amount of cobblestone that is in each of them. And if it fluctuates from 8 to 42 to 56, that is fine. As long as this item vault isn't filling up past 100 or so, I wouldn't really worry about it. After the cobblestone is crushed into gravel, you should see this fan pushing blue particles towards the brass funnel over at the end, right next to the item vault, and washing this gravel into iron nuggets and flint. It will be kind of hard to tell if it's being washed because there's going to be so much gravel there. But if up here you see that iron nuggets and flint are being dropped into lava and being combined into ingots respectively, then you'll know that it is working. And after running for literally that whole description, we already have half a stack of iron ingots, which is crazy fast. And that's the whole tutorial. Honestly, a, a really quick machine to build. And if you're using the schematic, probably even easier. If you do have any questions about building it or, or specific things, just let me down in the comments and I will respond as fast as I can. If you enjoyed this tutorial, I have a bajillion other builds on my channel. Uh, one where I can produce 14, I think, different items, and it produces at most 200,000 items per hour. So if you want just too many items at all times, check that one out. But yeah, that is it. If you liked it, be sure to like the video. And if you're new here, consider subscribing. I'll see you all next time. Peace.